Um, welcome. Good morning. Um, we're going to start here by talking about this is the model where we left off with the last time we met. I'm just going to talk about some of the changes we made. Visually, I think you can see that I've, I've applied some materials here, in this case, some tile on the walls and some tiling on the floors. Um, let me just zoom in here. I can sort of take a closer look at there. I zoomed out instead of zooming in. That's kind of a dumb thing to do. Try to act a little smarter here for the rest of the class. Again, keeping my fingers crossed. All right. So it's a little laggy here. And I'm just going to, and, and this is a good reason why I like to keep my layers well organized and labeled, right? So I, what's really bugging my system down at the moment when I try to sort of move around is two things. One is that I have, I have it in rendered mode. So it's trying to render everything and bounce light around um, every time I move my vantage point, my camera, my eyeball, right? As we move through the model, right? It has to recalculate a bunch of stuff. Um, two, the pipe space frame is a bunch of different surfaces and poly surfaces and pipes and curves and things like that. So if I keep things organized in my layers, right now I don't wanna necessarily look at my space frame. I'm just gonna turn that off, turn that layer off for the time being. Just uh, maybe, there we go. Just set a new active layer. Again, I'm not sure what's going on here. Ta -da. All right, here we go. Turn off the pipe space frame. I swear every time this, this thing, I'm convinced that me me sort of broadcasting over Zoom is what's what's really like it's like this plus um, a, a complex model is just too much for my laptop apparently that's a shame anyway so um, I've I've turned off that layer right and so I, I have a series of layers you've probably noticed or recognized a couple of these because they were layers that I created in the context model that I gave you guys to use right so the original sub D's original surfaces and curves top profile curves are all things that I, I gave you in the original um, file, right? So um, let me just talk a little bit about what I did to create these materials. And don't worry, I mean, you don't have to do this or follow along at home. It's not something I need you to do now, but I'll, I'll go over this again on Wednesday, next time we meet. Um, but I just wanted to sort of show you, I'm gonna go to, first of all, I'm looking over on the right hand side of the screen where I have properties and layers. I have a set of tabs here. Another one is called rendering properties. The other one is called materials. I'm just going to go to this paint tube looking uh, tab icon um, and toggle on my materials. And what you can see here is I have two different shaders or materials um, already loaded. And you can see that they're the two materials that I've applied this one to the walls, right? Or this sort of sub D geometry, and the other one to the floor geometry, which is basically just a flat plane that I, I placed on the, on the sort of XY plane where Z equals zero in my, our uh, Cartesian coordinate space. All right. So. In order to do that, um, and hopefully your window looks blank, if you have a plus that says create new material, you can click that, right? I just click that. And then um, I go to this first option and the, the menu that pops up where it has a little folder and says import from material library, right? And what this will do is this will bring up an explorer window um, pointed to Rhino's uh, built-in uh, material library, right? And so you can see that there's a, there's a number of directories inside of here. Um, they're broken down in types of materials like architectural materials versus ceramics versus glass materials or metals materials, paint, plaster, plastic, etc. I'm just going to go to architectural. I'm just going to point out what I used. I just went to, uh, let's see, went to architectural and then I believe, no, maybe I didn't. Maybe I went to um, ceramics. I went to ceramics. No, I did not. I take that back. I can go with porcelain ceramics. Right here. Sorry, I went to architectural, went to wall, right? Okay, then I went to tile. <laughs> Sorry, it's one of those days. Like I know exactly what I want to say, but I just can't say it, can't spit it out. I, in this case, I picked tile, thin gray reflective, right? When I hit open, it gives me this, it gives me tile, thin gray react, um, reflective. It gives you a, a sphere in the window where it actually places the, um, instantiates the, the, the shader across the sphere so you can sort of see what it looks like as a preview. And then down here, you get a set of properties for this material, right? So we can see that there's a number of properties, including glossiness, reflectiveness, um, transparency, right? These are set to 100s and zeros and or any place in between. Then you can see that there's also some textures being sent. So there's an actual uh, map or, or image file that's then being mapped on here as a color map and also being mapped as a bump map, right? Which actually um, uses the white and, and black and gray um, values of the, the bitmap that's, that's sort of wallpapered and tiled across here and actually begins to uh, 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 alter your geometry. So black might actually 
um, uh, uh, bump in your geometry a little bit for these sort of grout um, joints and things like that, right? So I'm just gonna leave those this, um, the way they are. And so in order to apply these materials, I can just select the materials or select the geometry that I want to use. In this case, I'm, I'm selecting the sub-D geometry, right? Now, if you're trying this at home, you're trying to select the sub-D geometry that I gave you, right? These walls, these sort of really wavy, curvy, doubly curved things that bridge across each other, right? Um, they're on this sub-D layer. And uh, I think when I gave you this file, that sub-D layer was locked. So you need to go back in and, and unlock that. Click that little padlock icon and, until it's unlocked. And, uh, and then you can, you can select this material, right? I, I locked it so you couldn't accidentally select and drag and, or accidentally delete um, uh, these surfaces. But now we're actually gonna apply a shader to them. Um, you can unlock that. Go to your shaders or your materials uh, menu here. Um, and with these things selected, I can right click on that specific material. And I can say, assign this material to the objects that are selected right here. It's the first option, assign to the objects. All right. When I do that, then suddenly this thing turns to with these tiles, right? So I'm just going to delete these really quickly. And I'll just do this for you in real time. I delete these materials, right? You can see they default back to that sort of def uh, default white plaster um, shader that, that Rhino uses by default. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one as well. All right, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to this um, layer, sub Ds. I'm just going to right click on it. I could say, select all the objects on that layer. Yeah, it looks good, that looks good. So now I've selected all of these surfaces, all of these sub Ds. I'm just going to use my control button on my keyboard and click on the floor. I'm gonna unselect the floor. Right now it's not, it's not selected by control clicking on it. Um, don't worry, you can always just, uh, if you wanted to, to set a, a different shader for you later on, you can just select it again and, and just uh, select a different material and, and apply it. So I'm just gonna go to hit to the material uh, uh, panel here, hit plus import mat from material library and find the material that I want, in this case, architectural, walls, tile. I like this because it's kind of a nice sort of grid, even grid across a curved, um, uh, surface. So it really, I think, accentuates the curvature of the surface and lets me sort of see the geometry here a little better. All right. So now that I've created that material and I put it in, in uh, Rhino, I can right click on it and say assign it to the objects that I have selected. All right. There it is. Boom. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the floor. I'm just going to try to select the floor here. There it is. I just was able to select it. You can see this. You can see some of the outline and, and wireframe of this floor uh, plane surface that I made. Again, I'm just gonna hit this plus sign to create a new material, import from material library. In this case, I'm gonna go to architectural and I'll go to floor. We'll look and see ceramics maybe, there they are. And uh, tile white and black. I don't really like that sort of checkerboard stuff. Maybe I'll go with tile, tile squares, paver reflective or just tile two reflective. I think I just picked tile two reflective. Maybe I'll just use that. Yeah, that looks nice. Again, what if I like that one, I can right click it, assign it to my uh, object that I've selected, in this case, the floor. You can see that my floor has become reflective and the scale of this thing, if you get closer to it, you can start to see that, that tile. Um, the color of the grout is actually, you know, actually closer to the, the, the color of the tile itself. So, which is a nice, nice thing to do, nice thing to spec, but consequently, it's not a lot of contrast between, let's say the, the grid joints and the grid tiles. So there you can see a little better as I zoom in. All right, so again, that's not necessarily something I want you to, to focus on too much between now and Wednesday. We'll go over this on Wednesday again um, as we start to prepare this model for visualizing it um, in perspective. All right, um, but I just wanted to sort of get that stuff out of the way for the time being. And now what I'm gonna talk about, I'm just gonna go to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tile or toggle my, um, my viewport, instead of being on rendered mode, I'm gonna go back to shaded mode. All right, now you can see that this thing is much more responsive because it's not trying to calculate a bunch of light directions and light rays and bouncing them around on a bunch of curved geometry. And, and uh, so um, suddenly it, it gets a, a lot lighter, um, this, this file. All right, so where we left off before, right? We had this space frame that, I, that we developed um, and, and baked in, uh, we piped it and then we baked it in um, to the uh, Rhino file itself, right? So we could, I don't have Grasshopper open. Um, these are all baked static poly surfaces, right? These, these sort of cylinders that I, I piped and, and then baked into Rhino, right? 
you can see them from you know, here they are, right? Probably not a big, not too big of a surprise here. A lot of you had something similar, right? So if you had uh, simpler trusses, right? If so, just make sure that spacing is, is small so you get a lot of trusses, right? Again, I just want you to make sure you get a, a, a density that's comparable to this along that, that roof, all right? So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna build here step-by-step, step, right? And so I'm just gonna show you first. So just make sure you're paying attention here. One of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, these top rail curves, right? These top uh, curve profiles that we used, right? From before, and I'm, I'm just going to turn this on, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tween in between them in order to find, um, What's interesting is I'm going to find some curves that, that sort of run in between them as you, if, if you were animating from one set of, one curve to the next, right? Um, this idea of tweening comes from um, the cartoon industry. Um, this fact that you would sort of provide certain keyframes, right? Sort of certain keyframes of the animation, um, key moments, I guess, right? And it's sort of timeline, um, the storyboard. And then tweening is providing all those individual frames in between. Right to get from the arm being here to the arm being here, right? So to tween between, let's say here and here, right? I might need a, a couple of steps in between, right? That's what those tweens mean. We can tween in between two curves, and that gives us a set of curves that sort of interpolate um, depending on the number that you have, right? In between them, and we're going to use one of those as a sort of top curve for a surface. Then we're going to draw another curve down here on the ground plane to be nice and planar and easy to draw. Okay. So take that one and that one, and we're going to loft them into a new surface. We're going to use this surface to create a vertical space frame system that would be holding up some glazing on the inside. Okay, so we'll be actually once we uh, once we're done today, we'll actually be able to see through the surface because it'll just be so space frame. Um, we'll reconcile and delete portions of the space frame to allow um, these uh, um, these corridor uh, tubes or bridges um, to sort of slide through them and uh, let the space frames sort of work their way around them um, without, without uh, um, clashing with them, all right? And, uh, and we'll bake that into Rhino as well, all right? So we're, we're really sort of giving this a sort of multivalent layered um, complex, uh, uh, nice sort of architecture here, right? Um, there's some double curvature. We're starting to talk about circulation in this sort of slot canyon atrium, circulation zigzagging um, back and forth um, to this atrium between two sides of the building or be, even between two buildings and then enclosing this thing uh, with a, a roof uh, with a complex structure and, and this sort of nice uh, glass canopy. Um, and then we'll have a sort of glass uh, wall that sort of uh, serpentines its way, slides its way through. Um, that's sort of more vertically oriented, okay? And so I just want you to sort of look at the steps I take and then you can follow along with the video because I'm gonna be doing several things at once here and they're all sort of new to probably most of you, all right? But again, we're just taking the ingredients that we already have and we're building in more ingredients, using those to create more ingredients, bringing those into Grasshopper and creating more systems, all right? Um, so we're just building off of the stuff that we've already done. All right, so I'm just gonna turn this off, new, new curves. I've created a couple of new, new uh, layers here that I think will come in handy here. So I'm just gonna actually turn these back on and I'll go ahead and just select, select the items that are on them, select objects, there we go. And I'll just turn that off, there we go, or delete them so I can just build these from scratch. All right, so again, when it comes to getting a, a complex model, I don't care where you're working, um, um, you know, it's all about keeping the geometry organized, right? In Rhino, it's all about layers, keeping things organized on layers. And so I, again, with layers, I can turn off some of this geometry that I don't need, right? So I'm gonna turn off this pipe space frame, right? And suddenly I'm, I'm sort of getting rid of some of this visual clutter that I just don't need right now, right? Still there in the model, I, I just don't need to see it. And there's just too many things going on here for me to see um, anyway. So if I go to this pipe space frame, I'm just gonna make that the active layer. Oh wait, no, 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 not that one, sorry. Top profile curves, my bad. I just misspoke, sorry. I'm gonna turn off these sub Ds, right? Again, these were the top curves running along these, these, uh, these walls that I gave you, right? That you used, or a lot of you used, not all of you, but a lot of you used to create a surface. Some of you just used as rails and you divided these curves up and, and created uh, just two-dimensional trusses along them, right? Either way, you use these, these blue curves, these two blue curves, and we're gonna do that again. I'm just gonna turn off the sub Ds so you can just see the curves themselves. 
we can take a look at what this tween curve uh, command does. I'm going to go back and forth between perspective and top view so you can sort of see all of these at once. I'll just fit everything to my, my, uh, my window here, each of my, my uh, viewports. And I'm just going to type this in, tween curves, right? All right. And it's going to say, select a start and an end curve, all right? So I'll go ahead and do that. And then it says, okay, how many tweens or snapshots in between the sort of initial condition or the initial curve and the end condition or the end curve do you want, right? And so um, in this case, it, by default, I think the number is six. And so it's giving me six sort of curves in between, right? And these start to look like isoparms. It's another way to sort of think about generating maybe some, some curves in between here. And it's one of these things I'm just gonna hit enter. I'm just gonna pick one of these to use, maybe this one right here. I'll go ahead and delete the other ones. Just gonna, I just wanted to create the, a sort of nice top sort of um, uh, uh, edge, right? That I can start to loft to something along the floor to create a surface that I can then instantiate some glazing and then, um, and then the sort of space frame structure to hold up the glazing, all right? And so here's my two original curves, right? You can see them selected. They're, they're violet or sorry, magenta um, with all these blue points along them. Here's this new one that we just generated using the tween. I generated more curves than I needed and I was able to pick and choose which one I wanted to actually use, right? And delete the other ones away. I'm just gonna select this one. I'm just gonna put it on this new layer that I created called new curves, right? So um, this is gonna be the top one. All right. And I'm gonna turn off or turn my sub these back on. All right. I'm gonna turn off these top profiles. Okay. And again, I'm just going to, in perspective view, by default, and, and by, by the way, I, I don't, if you can see this, I'm trying to pan and I'm trying to zoom. And at a certain point, right, it's saying like, I can't zoom any further and it's not zoom, zooming very far. I can always go to over here and use the zoom window tool and I can zoom in on the part that I wanna really zoom in on and it sort of recenters my, my uh, rotation and my zooming so I can, can do a little more fine tuning here. Um, so if I look at my settings down below, right? Um, and I have grid snap turned off, I have ortho turned off, I have planar turned on, I have object snap turned off, and I have smart track turned on. That's good enough for me. I'm just gonna go over here and I'm just gonna draw a spline, this uh, uh, control point curve, right? So again, you see which, which uh, tool I'm selecting, right? You know, with polylines, I can go with uh, these, these sort of curved splines. So I'm just gonna use the curved splines here. It's gonna let me sort of select points. And I'm just gonna draw these along the, the floor. And I'm just gonna be careful that I'm not actually you know, I turned off my object snap, so I don't actually snap to something that's not on the floor, right? That's something somehow up above. And if I keep things that are planar, right? And uh, if my construction plane is by default set to the XY plane, which it typically is, and I can start to draw something along the, the floor here really carefully. And I'm just gonna, again, I'm just sort of uh, spitballing this. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just looking along, drawing this along the, the, the floor and making something that, that sort of accentuates or maybe it looks like almost an offset um, in some, some cases of the, this bottom edge here. Right? Again, I'm just sort of zooming in and out so I can sort of see things. When I get close to the end, I'm just gonna right click to, to end that command. Now I've drawn a sort of bottom curve, right? For, for um, to go along with this top curve. All right, I might, just sort of nuance, sort of fine tune that just a little bit. I can always pick these uh, control points along that curve, right? And you can drag them or move them and just further sculpt the curve a little bit, right? All right, so I'm just gonna turn my sub D's off and you can see what I have. I have basically a top curve and a bottom curve. I may generate the top curve using the tween curve command in Rhino. And the bottom curve, I just simply drew freehanded a curve, right? Along the floor. And now I'm just gonna type in the command loft and I'm just gonna select that one and that one. And I select them at the same ends and that way it'll connect up, you know, this end to that end and this end to that end and sort of loft in between. You'll see that I have a different set of a number of points along the top versus the bottom. And so I have these sort of weird isoparms, you know, this sort of checkerboard along the surface doesn't look so even. If I say rebuild and maybe I up the 10 control points to something like 100. Yeah, that looks a little better, right? It looks a little cleaner. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Right? That gives me a nice lofted surface. So this is gonna be um, similar to the, 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 uh, 
the um, demonstration last week, right? The sort of surface that I'm gonna use to create a bunch of curves that I can then use as, uh, as trusses, right? Um, to make these sort of three-dimensional trusses. All right, so there's several different ways I'm gonna do this. All right, but I'm, first and foremost, I'm just going to, you can see the, the old surface I made. Yeah, I'll just take this new surface, right, that I made. I'll just delete that old surface that, that I gave to, that I previewed earlier for you. So this is the new one I made. I'm just gonna select it and put it on the, the right layer. It's called a new surface. There we are. All right, turn off that new curves layer. I can always turn that on and reloft if I need to later on. Okay, so this surface, again, I'm just gonna use the rebuild. Yeah. And I'm just going to look at, um, excuse me, I'm just gonna look at this. Actually, you know, th this worked out well. The reason why, is because I just want all of these vertical isoparms. And so I'm gonna extract the wireframe here in a moment and use those as curves, right? Just like we did before, just like we did before. Um, and so these, these curves or these, you know, this sort of wireframe that we see, right now that's just a visual representation that's, that Rhino maps across the surface so we can see the geometry better, right? We can actually use that and actually make those curves on their own and, that's, and then use those as ingredients to make our trusses, just like we did before, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, since I only, I don't need the horizontal ones and I only have one, two, three, um, I'm not gonna actually rebuild this because uh, um, I kind of like just having three to delete really quickly. And I like, I like the number that I have here. So I'll just use this number. But if I wanted to change the, the number of the vertical isoparms or the horizontal isoparms, again, just as a rehash here, I will go ahead and type in rebuild, select this surface, right? And then over here, I can I have a number of things I can do, right? I can, I can make sure that the degree is set to, to three in the, each case. And I can change the number of the divisions in U or sort of the, the latitude lines and B in the, the longitude line. So um, it, right now it sort of set to change pretty dramatically. I'm just gonna hit preview, right? And let's say that 100 seems a bit extreme. Maybe I would do 80, right? And with four, um, point count of four, we get three sort of isoparms going across and the, the horizontal. So maybe I'll go ahead and hit okay, right? But again, I, I just wanna get those nice isoparms sort of nice and evenly distributed across the, the vertical parts um, and then minimize the amount of, of uh, horizontal ones I have, all right? Okay, and I, I can turn layers on and off as I need them. Again, all that original geometry that I had before, it's still, on, it's still in the file, I just turned the layers off, right? So, so I can see exactly what I'm working on at any given moment and not accidentally screw up anything else, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna type in extract wireframe. Just type in extract and need a little telesense and I'll say, okay, what do you wanna extract? I'm just gonna go down to the wireframe portion. All right, I'll select the surface that I made. All right, right click or hit enter. And now I just accidentally delete that surface away. You can see I, I have, all those isoparms are now curves, right? I'm just going to delete those, those horizontal ones. All right. Okay. Look at that, right? So these are gonna be part of those cords of, of sort of vertical trusses that are they're sort of spanning from the ceiling down to the floor to hold up a glazing system that, you know, that, that, that we're modeling, all right? So with that in mind, um, I'm going to, select all of these curves, I'm gonna put them on a specific layer. In this case, I've, I've made three new layers, one called the first set of chords and then the second set of chords and the third set of chords. All right, so I'm gonna put these on the first set of chords layer. I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to use the copy command, right? Or here's the button for it, but I can type in copy into the control uh, or in the command line in, in Rhino up here. I can say, okay, I've selected all of these things. So this is the geometry I'm gonna copy. I'm going to turn my object snaps back on, make sure that end is selected. I'm just going to snap at that end and, and click. I'm going to make a copy just in the exact same place here. So I'm just going to snap again to the exact same uh, point. And those copies, those new copies are now highlighted or, or selected. Before I deselect them, I'm just going to change the layer. I'm going to put them on as, let's say, the second set of chords. All right. So now I have a first set of chords. Right, I can turn those off and I have a second set of chords. They're exact copy of, of each other. 
I'm gonna do the exact same thing here, right? Turn the first set of chords on only, right? And I'm gonna copy them. And we're gonna do, we're gonna make a copy of those in the exact same place this time, okay? And this time I'm gonna set those onto the third chords uh, layer, right? Okay, so now we have, we have truss or these chords, these lines on, on each of these, first, second, and third. So the first set of chords, I'm gonna start here at my starting point, and I'm just gonna go all the way to the end. I'm just gonna delete that last one on the end. Oops, somehow I right, make sure I just have the first set selected there. Just select that end one. And now I'm gonna set, step, uh, turn on the second set and turn off the first set, right? You'll see the second set has that end one at the very end here that we, we deleted away on the first set. On the first, on the second set, I'm gonna go back to the first curve and I'm gonna delete that one, all right? So now we have basically a starting chord and an ending chord for each of these trusses as they go through. All right, I'm gonna turn both of those off. I'm just gonna say this third set, I'm gonna select them, sell all, right? All right, or I can right click on that layer and say, select all the objects on just that layer. All right, I'm gonna turn on these other layers. I'm just gonna go in the top view. I'm just gonna move the, just the objects on the third, the third chords layer. I'm just gonna move them outwards a bit because we're gonna use those as the sort of, the, 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 sort of um, the way to sort of create a, a sort of three dimensional sort of, top chord here. And so again, I'm just gonna go into top view. I'm just gonna move them out and create that sort of depth. And then I'm also gonna, just gonna stagger them a little bit so they're, they're sort of in that in-between stage here. I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not really have a, um, an actual, uh, don't actually have an actual uh, um, measurement or, or dimension in mind. Again, I'm just going to quickly just, I don't know why that moved a bit. I'm just moving these. There we are. Just so I get those in an interesting place here. Some of them are a little closer. Some of them are a little further away. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. And so, Let's see. I can go ahead and save this. And now I have basically three sets of these vertical lines and they're all pretty derivative of, the, of, the, of each other, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and type in Grasshopper and open up Grasshopper and, and we're gonna start to make some more, some more three-dimensional trusses here. Now I suspect this copying and pasting and which ones to delete, maybe it doesn't quite make sense to you, right? Try your best. And uh, between now and Wednesday, right? Try your best. If, if you try this out on Wednesday and you have problems with it, you can come Wednesday and say, whoa, whoa, Josh, before you start anything new, let's back up. Can you show me step-by-step step what you did, right? So we can really make Wednesday count if you, if, you, if, you, if you go back, look at the video, see what I did, try to follow along. And if you have any really major difficulties or hiccups, then you can come on Wednesday and we can really make that count with some, some quick troubleshooting for the first 15 minutes, get you on track um, before we move on and, and, and um, add some more things to this, okay? So I'll just set that aside for a moment um, for you to, to sort of chew on, right? Um, please, please do, or don't, please don't put this off until the end of the weekend, um, but, but try this out, the, the stuff that we're doing today. Um, in th that case, if you have any problems, right, I can help you. I can help you real easily uh, during class time. All right, so. I'm just gonna open up the file that we uh, ended with last Wednesday, last week. And I posted it here once I fixed a few things that right after class, I, within five minutes of class ending, I, I was able to fix it and uh, post it for you guys on Canvas. So it's 3dtrusses.gh, that's available to you on Canvas. You can see it still has the, uh, these old curves plugged in. So I'm just, it's up to me to sort of, uh, I'm just gonna right click on these curve inputs, right? These are the, these curve widgets, this one, two, and three, right? You'll remember, those are the widgets that you, you were referencing in some curves from Rhino into Grasshopper in order to create our trusses. So I'm just gonna right click on each one, and clear those values out, just get rid of all that red noise here. I don't need any more. I did that for the top canopy and I've already baked those into Rhino once I got those sliders where I wanted them. So I can go ahead and clear those values out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select a new set of curves for each of these. So I'm gonna right click on this first one and say set multiple curves. It's gonna go back to Rhino. 
And instead of trying to like drag a window or a box around these things, I'm just gonna go to my layers. We go to the first set of chords. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say, select the objects here. So this selects all the objects just on that layer. All right. And I'm gonna hit enter right, on my keyboard. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna go back to Grasshopper. Grasshopper has those and it's starting to divide them up and that's great. I'm gonna right click on the second curve widget. So you set multiple curves. I'm gonna to go to the second set of chords here, this layer, and right click and say select objects and hit enter. All right, now we're starting to we're starting to make some trusses here. Some things are not quite making sense. And some of you had some crisscrossing going on that, that looks a little unsightly. We'll, we'll fix that in a moment. Um, but first, let's finish this. Let's set multiple curves for this third one. And I think you're starting to see the pattern here. If not, um, well, you will soon. Um, I can go to the third curves layer, third chords layer, and select objects, right click, select objects, hit enter. Right now I'm starting to make some three dimensional truss work here. All right, yeah. Now again, I've referenced all of these curves. So if I go back to, let's say the third curve objects in Rhino, select objects, right? I can now start to move these around. And then once I'm done moving them, you'll start to see that update, right? The grasshopper stuff will update on them. So you can see that we're sort of shifting and moving and things like that as we go. Now this crisscrossing means that one of these curves, just one of these curves, apparently is going the wrong direction. That's just incumbent on me to sort of figure that out for just a moment, it won't take me too long, okay? You can see some of these are kind of distorted and stretched. Interesting how that works, right? We could always, if we were interested, we could always offset the surface and generate new set isoparms, but I kind of like this one, I don't know, probably weird. I kind of like the fact that it gets deeper in some places and shallower in other places, right? I like that differentiation, that serial difference as we move across the system. It begins to talk about how each of these components can be different based off of whatever criteria that we've set for them, right? So again, that sort of uh, mass customization versus the sort of mass production idea um, that some of these digital technologies afford us. Um, all right, so it looks like, uh, let's see here. At this point, I'm just going to go to analyze, Direction, I'm in Rhino. I'm just gonna select some of these curves. I'm just gonna look at their direction, try to see what the direction are. I might have to up this a bit. Okay, it looks like I have a couple points down here and a couple points down here. Let's see if I can just flip that one. Let's click it and flip that one. Now maybe they're all going the right direction. Yeah, it looks much better. All right. So I did is I looked at the direction, right? So they were giving me a point at the start point for each of those. A couple of them were flipped. The starting point were at the bottom instead of the top. So I clicked those starting points and I toggled them to the top. You can toggle them back and forth between, you know, the start point or the end point. Once I had them all going the same direction, I was able to hit enter and, and finish the command. And, and now everything looks nice and, and even here. All right, so I'm just a couple of steps away here, right? I just need to pipe these things. Let me go ahead and get saved really quickly before I turn on all these pipes. Go ahead and I'm saving the Rhino file and I'm gonna save the Grasshopper file. Again, remember the mantra here, save early, save often. Um, in that case, if, in case you need to, uh, in case you're, it's really easy sometimes to get some of these things tangled up and then suddenly um, the amount of geometry you're creating sort of exponentially grows in a way that you didn't anticipate. And then suddenly you run out of memory and then Rhino wants to, to close on you, right? Um, and so I, again, I always recommend to sort of before you accident, like I have this deactivated right now, this uh, pipe widget. Um, and before I turned it on, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I saved everything, right? Just in case I needed to go back and uh, adjust something, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on, turn this back on to enabled, turn on the preview. Let's see what these pipes look like. Just right click on that widget. Right? And it's not looking so shabby here, not too bad, not too bad. All right, now let's, let's evaluate it before I bake these in take all this, this time. Let's just turn everything else on again, sort of look and see what we have. Pipe space frame. Oh yeah, let's see here. Now I have another space frame that's vertically oriented inside this space. So now we have, let me just zoom in here. 
Oh yeah. Look at that. That's incredible. Wow. This is like a, a I mean, this is like trusses on steroids or something, right? All right. So, um, if I think about this for just a moment, let me turn off these other pipe space frames and maybe it will make this a little lighter to sort of tumble around. When I use my right mouse button, right, I can, in perspective view, I can, I can dolly and tumble around the model, right? Um, when I hold down the shift key and use my right mouse button, I can pan and sort of uh, pull my model around, the, the model view around, right? So you can see this, this hand moving, right? And so instead of rotating, I can just sort of slide and drag, right? So I'm just going back and forth. Sometimes my finger is on the, on the, the shift key on my keyboard and sometimes it's not. Just sort of trying to find a good spot here to sort of line up with, sort of really immerse myself in this space. It's not looking so bad, not looking so bad if I do say so myself. I like the density here. I'm just gonna turn this pipe, pipe space frame on, make sure there's not too many, that'll, that'll work. It'll work. I'll turn that back off. All right. And so now I'm just going to create one more layer here. I'm going to call this vertical space frame, right? This sort of three dimensional set of trusses that create a, a sort of system that, that uh, works in a number of different directions. So instead of just spanning from um, the middle outwards, right, it, it can, it can uh, distribute forces. Um, almost like a shell in, in multiple directions. It's kind of a nice, nice structural thing here. So I'll go ahead and create that new layer. And I'm gonna set that as the active layer and then right click on this piped uh, uh, widget and bring up the menu that says bake and make sure that vertical space frame is selected on that layer that I'm gonna bake these things into and go ahead and hit okay. All right, I save this grasshopper file before I close grasshopper. Oh, and there we are. All right. now. I do need to go through here. Once I really like this space frame, I'm gonna use it. I do need to go through here and maybe delete certain, certain um, uh, webbings and things like that that are, that are accidentally slicing through other parts of my model and don't really make a lot of sense here. So in this case, I might, might do that here just sort of really quickly, try to get rid of some of these um, uh, uh, struts that are cutting through. Right, and I can go through here and start to start to clean those out. Right. Well, that's interesting. Ooh, gotta guess you gotta be careful with those vertical ones. Hmm. All right. Let's see if that's a problem with you guys. If so, I can always help you with that. Right. Okay. And so this is what I want you guys to work on between now and Wednesday, right? Again, it's a rehash. We're creating some new, some, some more curves in different ways, um, but then it's good practice, right? We'll loft, loft them into a surface, and then we'll, we'll start to create, um, we'll rebuild the surface, start to create isoparms in a particular direction, use those isoparms as cords for um, building a set of three-dimensional trusses. In this case, a vertical set that, that hold up sort of glazing. If you think about this, maybe then we start to have um, you know, sort of multiple thresholds, right? So starting to think about spaces where, um, you know, parts of it are, are more outside than inside, and some of them are more inside than outside. Um, so uh, on Wednesday, we'll start talking more, we'll, we'll redo some more shaders and start talking about materials. I'll actually start to draw some more things on the ground plane that we can actually use to cut out the ground plane in some places um, in order to make some planters. And uh, that will then, when we start to render or bring some renderings out into Photoshop, we can start to collage trees and vegetation and things like that in. Um, we'll also start to clean some things up and, uh, and add people, right? So scaled figures, right? Just in, in second year where you started to draw in little, little scaled figures and, and people um, and silhouettes and things like that, um, we'll, we'll be doing it here, but digitally, right? So in order to give this thing scale and again, to add some atmosphere and begin to talk about um, program where people are walking, passing through um, and uh, et cetera, right? So um, let me just see here. Again, I'll just give you a sneak preview of that since I think we have a few minutes here. Um, let me just type, pipe, uh, pull in these pipe space frames here, sort of overhead, right? And you have quite a rich space that we've built up here, I think. I'll just slowly try to carefully zoom out here. 
right now it's like look at the space frame man like crazy and and I, I'm actually floating up in the air here. Um, you know, I think a lot of you, I think you you're paying attention, right? You listened really well, and you either try to get yourself, you know, so you're you're a human sort of uh, sitting on the floor, or you're a human maybe on one of these bridges, standing on top of one of these bridges, looking out, right? Um, what I would say is you always want to sort of think about not only where you're standing, which you can you can manipulate with the with the with the by holding down the shift key and, and using the pan, right? But also sort of where you're pointed at, we're just using the, the right mouse button and sort of tumbling, right? And rotating your view um, so that you're also looking up and out. So you don't necessarily see a ton of floor and ignore the ceiling, right? So um, again, just some, some advice here. And a lot of you, I think, did a really good job of sort of picking up on that. Um, and just so the, the quick screen captures that I saw and were able to, to, to sign grades to already, right? And there's, there's a lot of them. So you guys did a good job by and large. Um, so uh, if I wanted to really quickly, I might just go to rendered. And instead of even turning on the render, uh, instead of doing the actual rendering, if I have my viewport uh, large enough, I can go to view and capture to file, right? And if I need to alter that view and I don't have a, a large enough um, laptop, I can always change the scale of this to something to three or four, right? And get, get more resolution here. Maybe I up this to two. Right, and that'll give me give me a set of pixels here. Right, um, set this to perspective. You can hit OK. Um, in this case, I can go to PNG. This is again stuff we'll go over uh, on Wednesday again. Um, maybe I put this on the desktop here. Right, and we'll be opening these things up in Photoshop, adding sky. Um, we'll be adding some entourage, some scaled figures, some vegetation. Um, we'll start to do some effects. We can actually start to use our brushes to um, uh, darken things up or lighten things up with our um, uh, selectively with our, uh, our our dodge and burn tools. Um, we can add textures in uh, Photoshop where it's appropriate. Although with this doubly curved geometry, in this case, it's easier to add it in Rhino and uh, as a shader if it looks okay. And then uh, and then render it out with it. So, um, but we'll talk about a number of these things. And so we'll again we're we're modeling geometry, but then when it comes to the sort of um, uh, representation of it, we'll 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 start here with these sort of um, uh, uh, perspectives, right? That we're we're sort of immersed inside this space, um, and we can show off um, your parametric prowess and know-how, um, but we can also show sort of you know bling it out, right? Um, and then this, the, the further steps after that is we will then think about exploded axon. And um, again, let me just uh, change this. And, uh oh, Oy. let's see why why is it not responding all of a sudden? Mm, 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 mm. I guess I got to be more careful about how much memory I'm using with geometry when I'm recording my my Zoom. Uh, so sorry about that. Yeah, again, I'm, I guess I'm not so responsive again. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk more about this on Wednesday, right? So I do want you to try to model that surface in the ways I showed and recorded. And um, I'm gonna stop sharing, I'm gonna stop recording.